on the 31st of March, we're going to be holding a couples meeting together with my husband. It's going to be at JCC Parklands and it's going to be awesome. Last year we had amazing couples dinner. It was so, so, so beautiful. And we were just open and candid, spoke about everything. And this year we are taking it even a notch higher. I want you to invite all your couple friends. And if you're a couple, it's only 4,000 shillings for the dinner. And normally the dinner is absolutely out of this world. So I want you to get ready for the couple's dinner. You don't want to miss it for anything. So make sure you're here on the 31st. We're going to be having an amazing couple's dinner. Don't let what you've done hinder you. Hinder you. Don't you let where you've been hinder you don't let what they've said hinder you. hinder you don't you let your past hinder you you're a woman Good evening, viewers. You're welcome to Woman Without Limits. I'm Reverend Kathy Kuna. Oh, it's always such a delight to have you tuned in. And I know that God has been blessing you even through this program. Woman Without Limits started a few years ago. And what we do is bring different women who come and tell us some amazing stories of where they are coming from and what God has done in their lives. And the men started asking us, why can't we also have some men? And so we started bringing also some men who've been of uh, serious impact and an amazing insight that they've brought onto this program. And we really want to thank God for every, every guest that has featured on Woman Without Limits. And every time we go from glory to glory, we never disappoint and we really want to honor God for that. Keep those uh, messages coming, keep the feedback coming because it helps us to understand where you're at and what it is that God is helping us do with and in your life. I'm Reverend Kathy Kuna, like I said, and I want to welcome you on today's set. We have an amazing guest. This woman makes me shudder. The other day she came to my office and she prayed and just her prayer took my husband and I on our knees and we started to weep before the almighty God because the presence of God just hit this place. I want to welcome Bishop Margaret Wangare. <laughs> Hi, Bishop. Hello. How are you? Okay. <laughs> Please welcome. Thank you. A woman that has done tremendous absolutely tremendous ministry in this land and across the nations. She started years ago when she was a little girl because God called her when she was in high school. And we saw and experienced some serious, amazing miracles. People came all, from all over the world to experience the miracles. They would come on wheelchairs and leave the wheelchairs behind. God has used this woman tremendously. And today we're going to be talking to her and see where she is now, where <laughs> she's been, and what God has been using her to do. Welcome, Thank Bishop. You. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much. Reverend. You are amazing. It's so good to have you. Thank you. It's a blessing. Okay, let me ask you. Okay. Do you walk in reverse? Or what happens? Because honestly, you keep <laughs> looking younger every time I see you. It's by the grace of God. Yeah. What else can I say? Amen. It is only God who can do that. Amen. Yeah. Amen. So, Bishop, we're going to start by finding out okay. where you were born, you know, how, <laughs> <laughs> how 
how your growing up was, you. you know, you. so we can at least get a, a glimpse. There are so many people that do not know you because they came much later yeah. in I life. Understand. I yeah. understand that. And so we need that introduction of just okay. getting to know okay. who Bishop is. Where did you okay. grow up? Uh, well, I thank the Lord because God is so good. Let me start with that. Yes. Amen. I was born in Campbell in a place called Karori Banana. And I thank the Lord because God has been so good and kind to me. And uh, he is a friend. He has been communicating with me like the way I do communicate with you. So he is indeed a good friend to me. When you were growing up as a little girl, you had siblings, of course. Sisters yes. and brothers. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. So did you grow up as a normal child playing bladder? <laughs> <laughs> you know? Well, in my family, I'm the firstborn. And, uh, and I had uh, one brother and five sisters. Three, they have been gone with the Lord. And I thank God for who God is. Uh, as a firstborn, I had a lull to pray in my family. And let me start when I came to know myself in primary school. And uh, I had that urge in me of loving God and knowing who God is. My uncle, who is a canon in Anglican Church, I remember when I was class three, I did ask him, who is the mother and the father of God? And who was the father and the father of the father of God? <laughs> and I continue asking, and then I ask him the second question. And where is the end of the world? And then he told me, Margaret, just continue with your studies. When you reach in Form 1, you come back to me and I will answer you. I say, no, I just wanted to know the Father and the Father of God so that I may understand the word very well. Okay, that can tell you, Reverend Kathy, that even in my childhood, I had that urge of knowing God. And I was born in a Christian family. My father and my dad, they were both believers in Anglican church. And I give God all the praise because I grew up with my sisters. But one thing my mother used to say is that I was not like the others. I could not understand how, but I could not argue. Even though they argue and they do funny things like the way children, they fight. I was a peacemaker. Wow. Even though they come and fight me, I will still go to them and I say, it's okay. Everything will be all right. So I, I believe that God started with me as young as I was. Wow. So inside you, you loved, you loved the Lord from the beginning. You can say that? I can say that because yeah. what made me to go, that time I wasn't saved though. But I went to my uncle, and then I say, uncle, tell me, who is the father of God and the father of the father? And then my uncle was just looking unto me, hey, girl. <laughs> <laughs> then he was Wait. the father of God and his grandfather. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and then the, my uncle told, said, no, just continue with the education. Right. Those questions, I will answer you when you reach in Form 1. Mm. But... Uh, I loved him. Lessons, I cannot tell why. And even in my Sunday school, when I started going to Sunday school, you know, they used to give us gifts. I would go with so many gifts because I would answer every question that the teacher would ask in Sunday school. And uh, afterwards, I became also a Sunday school teacher. I don't want to go far. I'm coming little by little. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my 
my gosh. So now you never had any um, rebellious attitude in you as a child, even as a teenager? Uh, Reverend Kathy, I would say, looking unto you eyeball to eyeball, no. Wow. I didn't have it. And I was a favorite to my both parents because I knew when my mother said, do this, I was supposed to do it. Wow. I knew when the father, my father said, don't, I knew that was, it's a total don't. Don't go ahead, don't see it, don't do it. That's how I was. And up to date, Reverend Kathy, among my sisters, in our families, they call me like a peacemaker. If I'm not there, when death occurs or anything, they, they, they feel that something is missing. So rebellion is not part of me. It's never been one. Wow, no. that's, that's amazing, Bishop. I can't say the same, <laughs> but Jesus is Lord. <laughs> Jesus is Lord, you know. Yeah. So, so tell me, Bishop, you started, God gave you a call when you were very, very young. young. How old were you? You were a teenager. A teenager. Let's go by that. Yes. Let's go by that word, teenager. Yes. Let's leave old. Yeah. <laughs> Let's yes. go by the word, teenager. teenager. Yes, Bishop. Uh, the Lord called me when I was a teenager, though, and uh, I gave my life in Anglican Church. That was St. John Church, Kiamba. And I continued with my Lord, and then I went to high school. And after going to high school, but I have gone ahead. In primary school, my headmaster was and is Mr. Njiao. And I was so little, but when the time of prayer comes, Mr. Zhao, the headmaster, used to say, we would like Margaret Wangari to pray for us. So they will carry me and put me on the table so that everybody will see me. And I will pray in primary school. And that was my lifestyle. Hmm. That is primary school. Yeah. OK, I continued like that. And I, I went to high school. When I went to Giriambo High School, they didn't have a Christian union. There, it, there was a Christian union, but it, was, it had corrupt. But the moment I entered there, I say, I am saved, and we are going to have a CEO. And I started it, and I continued with it until the time I moved from there. Giriambo High School has so many legacy. Because that is where Reverend Teresa was. That is if where our mother, you, I yeah. My mother. Wow. Uh -huh. yeah. That's where they met. That in is, yeah, that is where our mother Karoa, mm -hmm. Shimiwa was. So, and then I moved from there. Then I went to Karori High School. All what I would say is that when I gave my life to the Lord, I never left anything in my heart. I gave him my whole heart. And I, and I told him, Lord, whatever you want to do with me, do it. And that is all what I know. And I want you to understand my childhood, the teenager, where I am, I do not have any other song in my mouth. My song is, the Lord Jesus Christ is my savior. Thank other people, they have other stories. I don't have any other story that I can share to you. All what I know is about him because I never enjoyed anything in the world. I totally committed myself to God and God took over. And I thank God because he is Lord up to date. And there is nothing to regret. I hear so many testimonies about people when they were in the world. But I thank God because even though I don't have it, I love him. He's Amen. my lover. He's everything to me. Amen. And you know, he's all. He's all we need. Jesus Christ. Yeah. He's everything. He's all that I need. Yeah. I, I cannot go anywhere. I cannot go beyond that because he is all what I need. And he has been a provider for me. 
So giving him my life when I was a teenager and working together with him, it has really assisted me. There is one thing I want to share with me when I was in primary school. It was during the time of Easter. And I decided to sit down. There was a concert, and I had a place to play. And then I said, Lord, why did they kill you? I started asking him. And then I said, Lord, if you are still existing somewhere, why can't you come to me? Why can't you speak to me and tell me why they did that? And when I was there, I sat down. Do you know what I felt, Reverend Kathy? I, I felt the, the hair coming to me and I was doing, removing the, fair, uh, the hair out of my face. And then I, say, I look and he said, it's me. It's me. They killed me so that you may have life and hey. have it more abundantly. Mm. That was my first encounter with him. Then when I went to Guriambo High School, I became a prayer warrior. And then I went to the reverend. I said, reverend, I cannot do without prayer. Please, I beg, give me the keys for the church. He said, I don't give anybody. I said, please, I'm asking you kindly, give me the keys because I want to have time to pray. And I thank the Lord because God has been so real, good, and kind. He was a reverend in an Anglican church. I can tell you that when the favor of the Lord is upon you, mm. anything would happen to hey. you. Amen. Anything. Amen. So he gave me the keys. And then I was opening at 3 a.m. I will go there and then I will pray. I will lie down at the altar, pray, 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 pray until quarter to six. And then I will go take my shower and then prepare myself, go to the classroom. And that was my routine. One day when I was praying, the Lord spoke to me and I saw a wind. And when I saw the wind, I said, Lord, what type of a wind is this? I knew this wind is not good. And then he told me, some of these houses you see, they call them believers, but I am going to dismantle them all. I say, Lord, why? He told me, I did not tell you that so that you may start asking me questions. My God is tough. Oh, he is very tough. And then I said, Lord, I just wanted to know what else do you want to know? I have given you the information. And before the end of the day, you will see the manifestation. I went and I shared with one person and then I kept quiet. He told me, Margaret, are you no more? Is everything okay with you? Okay with you? Yeah. I said, you know what? I am okay, but I just felt I needed to share it with somebody because before the end of the day, it is going to happen. Mm -hmm. I kept quiet. At 4.30, the wind came. All those houses, they were into pieces. The iron sheet, everything, yes. And it happened. And then I say, Lord, you are God. That has, been, that, that has been the way I've been walking with the Lord. That is part of my teenage. Hmm. Yes. Now, as a teenager, would you be scared? <laughs> I be mean, that's, that's really deep, isn't it? Can you imagine a teenager? I mean, you, that's scary. I know. But the thing is mm -hmm. that I had, God had given me a gentle spirit. So, even though God will come and speak to me and tell me something, imagine I'll be still. I will be still. Yes, I will. The only thing, I was really, I was tough in questions. And the Lord used to tell me, no, don't. Don't even go there. Because when he speaks to me, I will go to questions and then he will tell me, don't. And I think... God was training me because I will come there. My spiritual father was tough. And I, I, I am a girl who like questioning and knowing things and, you know, but also my spiritual authority was like that. Margaret, why are you asking? I have mm. told you, don't ask. So I was not scared, Reverend. I was still. Mm -hmm. 
And even now, the Lord will come and speak to me even as I'm speaking to you. I'll be still. You won't know unless I will say that the Lord has spoken. Hmm. That, that, that it, it's a total relationship. Uh, allow me to say this. You've been together with Bishop Kuna for such a while. And you don't need to be told when he's coming to the bedroom. I don't need to. <laughs> you, you don't need to be told even when he need a cup of tea. I don't need. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. So that's the way I am with God. I'm very sensitive, and even when, <laughs> when we are driving, sometimes I may tell the one who is driving me, slowly. Not that I want us to go slowly, but there are some things going on in me, and I don't want to see what is going on with me until the time comes. Now, they called me the other day to come in and then I was praying because of the, the election and things like that. They told me, Margaret, we want you to pray because we need the rain. I said, that's okay. They never knew that God has already dealt with me concerning that. But when the time of prayer came, I said, you know what? I don't care who say that the rain will rain April. But I have come in the name of the Lord to say that the rain is going to rain. Amen. Hey. Hmm. And I said, I command that rain wherever you are. I want you to come and let these people know that there is God. Mm -hmm. And I want you to prove them wrong. Huh. So that is the way I am with God. He is very close to me and I'm close to him. He is a friend. There is that intimacy. Mm -hmm. Praise God. Amen. Amen. So now... <laughs> Tell us, Bishop, because in this, while you were still growing up in him, mm -hmm. he started performing serious miracles through you. Tell us about that. It was back, I know most of you, you could be, you are not born. It was back in 1974, and uh, I thank the Lord. <laughs> God used to come to me when I was in the classroom, and I used to have two notebooks. One I'm writing was the teacher is teaching, <laughs> and the other one, what the Lord God was teaching me and explaining to me what would happen. And I continued until after three to four months, I was so tired. And I thank God for my mother, because any time when the Lord will come, I will go and share with my mother. Mom, today the Lord came to me and he told me this and this will happen. And then my mother will tell me, bring your hands. And my mother will pray together with me. And she will tell me, be silent. Don't share it with anybody. Just keep it to yourself. And I thank God because my mother, God had given her that wisdom. And then I continued, I continued until the time came and there was a camp in Joro, and uh, a reverend from Nyeri called Kamau invited me to that camp. Then I went to my mother, and my background, as I told you, I was an Anglican. So, and my, my, my parents were stout, you know, Anglican people. So I told my mother, I'm invited to this camp. The first question, who are the organizers? I said, the Pentecostals. And then she told me, you know, that is no. You cannot go. I say, Mom, I knew it, but that's why I came to you to ask for permission to make the whole story short. My mother could not have allowed me to go to that camp. It was uh, a scenario. I say, Mama, give me some work. I will do it for you, and then allow me to go. I never told my mother that the angels came to me. And when the angels came, they told me about my going to Joro. He told me the bus. He gave me the numbers of the bus, the bus I would enter. He told me the conductor. He would come to me asking me for money. And when he looked unto me, he would tell me, are you Margaret? 
Then I will respond and say, yes, I am Margaret. And the conductor will tell you, I know your case. You know, some of these things, when you tell somebody who is normal, he would say, you have gone bananas. Mm. Things are not working OK. Wow. So it was so hard for my mother to release me. But when the worst came to us, then I went to my, my dad. I said, Dad, I had asked Mama to give me permission to go, but she cannot. And then she said, he, he asked me, what do you want? I want to go to Jero camp. And by the way, faith is so good. I had already packed in a small hard luggage. I had packed my, you know, everything. Luggage, yeah. Of course. Wow. I had. I had packed it, and I knew that I knew deep down in my heart I would go. But I didn't know how. I could not have gone without permission, but God is so good. And my, my father did ask me, Margaret, do you have money for my father to ask me? That was so hard for me. I said, Dad, the thing is that I told my, ma my father what I have told you. The angels came, and they told me this and this. Then I asked my dad, Dad, can I go? And my dad could not speak. My dad said, I went straight away. I picked my hard luggage. And my mother came and said, so now you're going. I said, Mama, let me go. There was no tug of war. I had 35 cents. I give 30 cents to my mother. I was left with five cents. So I started my journey by faith and with him. I went, <laughs> yes. <laughs> I took the bus and the conductor came. I was just praising God. And then when he reached unto me, he said, are you Margaret? <laughs> what? I say, yes, I am. I know your case. Oh my God. So I took like four buses and I reached to Joro. All the conductors, they knew my case. I reached a Joro camp and then after two, three days, the coordinator came and said, I know there are some people who are here, they have not paid their registration fee. I say, God, when you send your angels, you never told me about the registration fee. <laughs> yes. I said, Lord, I was taught about fasting. Today, no eating, no drinking. I will fast so that I may hear what you want. I decided to go to the field, and I was worshiping God, and I told God to vindicate for my situation. The same coordinator found me there. He said, hey, are you Margaret? I say, yes, somebody is looking for you in the office. I say, no, I am a stranger here. Nobody knows me. He said, uh -uh, somebody is waiting for you in the office. I followed him. When we entered in the office, there was nobody. I sat down. I asked him, who was that? He said, listen to me. Somebody came. He gave me your name. He told me where you are. He gave me the money for the registration fee. So now you are registered. And he told me to come and call you there. So I look at him. I say, you know, that was an angel. He said, it could be that was an angel. I went back. On the 31st of March, we're going to be holding a couple's meeting together with my husband. It's going to be at JCC Parklands, and it's going to be awesome. Last year, we had amazing couple's dinner. It was so, so, so beautiful. And we were just open and candid, spoke about everything. And this year, we are taking it even a notch higher. I want you to invite all your couple friends. And if you're a couple, it's only 4,000 shillings for the dinner. And normally the dinner is absolutely out of this world. So I want you to get ready for the couple's dinner. You don't want to miss it for anything. So make sure you're here on the 31st. We're going to be having an amazing couple's dinner. Ooh, 
my calling. There was a man called Reverend Manasseh Mankuleo. He was preaching. And when he was preaching, he said, some of you, you are going to become generals, whatever, lieutenant, colonels. He talked about all those terminologies. And then I said, Lord, I may not understand those terminologies, but Lord, all what I want is to work for you. All what I want is to work for you. He was preaching in the book of Isaiah, chapter 6. When King Uzziah died, then Isaiah also saw the Lord. I said, Lord, I do not know who is that King Uzziah in me, but I want him to die today because I want to see you. I want to have a total encounter with you. Hey. And Manasseh was praying, he asked for the handkerchiefs. I took the handkerchief. And then he said, if you have sick people, I, I counted all the sick people in my area. There were more than my handkerchief. And then I said, Lord, what else am I going to take? I took my cardigan, hand scarf, handkerchief. Then the Lord told me, your Bible is enough. It's going to represent everybody. So I took it all. So when he was praying, the power of the Lord came on me. And I was slain. <laughs> And after that, so many other people fall on me, but I was not injured because there were so many on me. But the Lord repeated the same thing that I used to see in high school. I used to see a big crowd, and I was preaching, and I could see Jesus Christ. We were wearing the same garment. And he used to prevent me, people not to come close to me. And uh, so when I shared that with my mother, it was so hard for my mother even to understand. But the thing is that it repeated by itself when I was there. And then I saw myself using the handkerchief, not this one though, but I decided to come with this. And I took the handkerchief and I saw myself laying hands on my grandma, not a close grandma, a decent grandma, but she was totally sick, an attorney sick, paralyzed because the, the disc and the spinal cord, they had gone kaboot. So... She was chased out from Kenyatta National Hospital, Kiambu, to go and die. I saw myself laying hands on her. And my grandma, I saw in the vision, my grandmother was healed. I saw Waiya, it was somebody who was highly educated, and he, he became crazy. I, I also saw him getting healed, and many other people. And then... Manasseh started saying, there is somebody here that God has spoken and you have an encounter with God. Please, would you tell us what God has spoken? My background could not have allowed me to. As an Anglican, we were being told, don't. The only person you would share with is so-and-so, but not in the public. I say, no, I can't. Then I went home. My going home after receiving that call, I said, this time, God, allow me to go with a train. He said, that's okay. Somebody gave me the lift from Joro to Nakuru town. I took the train. And then when I took the train, I said, Lord, have mercy on me. You know my case. I allowed everybody else to go. I was almost second last. And the one who was the conductor, I may say that, he looked unto me. He said, are you Margaret? I say, yes, I am Margaret. Hey. I know your case. Hey. So I came to Nairobi, and then I took the bus to my home. They all knew my case. The moment I reached home, I prayed for my mother. She used to have ulcers. She got healed. 
I pray for my cousin. She had polio. She got healed. My immediate sister, she used to have bad pneumonias and convulsions. She got healed. But do you know one thing? Nobody could see. They could not understand what was happening. Until the time I took my third born, Salome, we went together to our garden. And before we reached, so I entered to my grandma. And then I entered, and my grandpa was tough. I said, Grandma, I have come because I want to pray for you. I was carrying my handkerchief like this. I've come because I want to pray for you in the name of Jesus Christ. And then she told me, so many people, and the, even these Wakorinos with the white turban, they have come to me. Nothing has happened. I say, I am not like them. I am coming in the name of Jesus Christ. And then Grandpa told me, you girl, go to the garden first, and then you come and you pray for your grandma. I say, Grandpa, no. <laughs> what? No. I am not going to the garden. I want to pray for my grandma first. I have come here in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And this Christ that I'm carrying and this handkerchief, my grandma is going to be healed. You know, in our tradition, I'm not supposed to speak like that to my grandpa. But I had to because I felt now he's coming against me. And the power of God, you know, Reverend Cardi, the power of the Lord was overwhelming in me. I could feel it now. It's not me. Something else is happening in my life. Mm. I pray for my grandma. What I saw at Jorah camp, praise the name of the Lord. Mm. I lay hands on my grandma. I prayed for her. My grandmother stood up. She started walking. Hey. There was a total cry. Hey. People rejoicing. And I was there thanking the Lord. Reverend Kathy, let me tell you, I don't know what happened and how news goes so fast. Mm. Within 20 minutes, the medias were there. 20 minutes, the media came. And they started, uh, you know, interrogating me. And then I said I was a general camp. They prayed for me. They prayed for this handkerchief. I have prayed in the name of Jesus. And my grandma is healed. healed. And then they said, what do you want us to say? I want you to say that Jesus Christ of Nazareth has come. And he will continue doing great and mighty things in this locality. Mm. And they say, Jesus Christ of Nazareth, he is walking in banana mm. in Karori. And he continue walking and he is still walking mm. up to date. Mm. Mm. My God. So your grandmother was the first recorded miracle that happened. Yes. So what did that do to you as, as a bishop? Uh, the thing is that I was amazed. Yeah. Yes, I was. And I was so happy before God. I said, Lord, let me tell you something else. And I told you when you told me to come. I started, the Lord taught me. He told me, Margaret, remember, anything which is going to happen in your life, remember to return all the glory back to me as young as I was. And so when my grandmother got healed, I called them inside together with the media. I told them, can we return all the glory and all the praises to God? They could not understand the language, but I prayed and I returned it back to him. So I was really amazed. I was so happy to see the grandma is walking. And let me tell you, last year but one, she came in the church. No, she's 104. She's walking and upright. What? She's walking and upright? Yes. Yes. At 104, upright? Yes. And she said, this is what God can do. And she's still existing by the grace of God. Amen. Amen. What? Yes. So tell us from there, did that inspire you now? 
to believe God, to trust him and to pray? Uh, I believe God, you're not removing words out of my heart. But the thing is that when my grandmother got healed, so many people came from my area, Karori, Banana, Gashien, Dendero, they came. They were queuing. And I was praying for them. I prayed and I prayed and they were getting healed. Let me tell you, in my, at my grandmother's place, so many crippled men and women got healed. They came with their crutches. They went back walking upright by the, by the grace of God. And I can assure you that when the Lord purpose to call you and to give you a certain gift, he is a cheerful giver. Amen. He is a cheerful giver. Amen. And I would assure you that when my grandmother was healed, it really encourages me to continue praying for others. And you know, not with my knowledge or my stupidity, I continue using my handkerchiefs. Mm. Until the time came, I see my handkerchief is dirty. I say, now I'm going to use this name I had, the name of Jesus Christ. Mm. And I continue, even though I was using the handkerchief with the name of Jesus, now it was dirty. I said, I will wash it, but I will use the name of Jesus, and I believe that they are going to be healed without the handkerchief. Mm. And they started holding crusades there outside my grandmother's place. Yes. And it is not like today they recall the medias to come. They used to come where I was. Yes, they were coming to where I was. And they recorded all those miracles. I just want to say that God is so good and God is so kind. When I prayed for them, I just felt, I think you can be proud of that. And you can say, humanly speaking, I think I'm above all. Mm. But when I went to them, when I went to their hotel, God reminded me, Remember, this is all my doing. Mm -hmm. I knelt down. I said, Lord, thank you for reminding me that. This is all you are doing. So please, God, receive all the glory. Receive all the honor mm -hmm. because you deserve it all. Am I, uh, what I'm trying to tell you is that, Reverend Kathy, is that every day, every hour, because last year we had a conference. December, no, August. And a woman came with a girl. She could not talk, she could not see, she could not walk. They brought her there. And the woman told me, my child cannot walk. I want you to pray for her. I say, okay, let her stay there. I'm going to pray for her. And then I did. I prayed. You know, some miracles, you don't pray 10 minutes. It's just a minute, a few seconds. I pray less than a minute, and I say, Lord, you know what? This is a challenge for every person here. The, the conference is packed, but I want you now to come and touch this girl. Let her hear, see, walk in Jesus' name. The next thing we knew, she walked by herself. She started talking. So I'm not only talking about the, the God of 70s or 80s or 90s. He is the God of 2016 Amen. and 2017. Amen. Amen. He has not changed. Mm. And why I decided I, I, I don't want pride to come, but I can assure you that is something if people would speak to you from the depth of their heart. Yeah. If you have this gift of miracles and wonders happening in your life, you just need God because pride will come and take you out of. Yeah. Yes. Out of line. It's true. And it happens, it happens to so many people. But yeah. myself, I decided, Kathy, even though today God will give me my own jet, even though today God will give me the whole of Nairobi to be mine, I will still be Margaret Wangari. Wow. Nothing will change me. 
I have traveled everywhere. But when I come back home, you can't tell. Even though when we are together, you won't know. But the thing is that I told God, please preserve me. Amen. Just preserve me, God. Amen. Because that is the only thing that the Lord God will do. Mm. And then you will continue mm. pursuing more years. Mm. And I remember before the late Bishop Murima died, he called me to KICC. He said, Margaret, tell us the secret. Because you've been walking with God, but when you come back, it is as if you have never traveled. I told them, the only secret is to know him. And when you know him, whatsoever he will communicate to you, you will agree. And I have told God, any time, whatever you will do, receive the praises, receive the glory, because it is all about you. You know, the only thing people does not understand, Christ is the center of everything. It does not matter how many miracles you will do. It does not matter how many people will give their lives to the Lord. Christ. The only thing is that Christ mm. is the center mm. of everything. Mm. And if he is the center, whom am I? Mm. I am nobody. So I better remain like that. Mm. Wow. You met the likes of Catherine Kuhlman. Of course. Tell us about it because I, I'm told that when you got there, she couldn't even preach. Hey, hey, whoa. Mm. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. That was another miracle, as I told you, that God know my case. Mm -hmm. And I decided to tell God, I am not going to ask what are my cases. Because God has been meeting so many cases for me. I was invited here in Nairobi 680 Hotel and I was one of the speakers for the businessmen. And the late Moigai brother to Jomo Kenyatta, the late, was there. And they announced about going to Israel. And then I never counted myself one of going to Israel because I didn't have money, though. But Moigai said, if there is a trip, count me. I am going to pay for Evangelist Margaret, the flight the hotel, explains everything. And so, first class, of course. <laughs> so I went and I stayed in a five-star hotel. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. And then when I went, Catherine Kuhlman was there. And I thank God because I used to go to Finland. They used to tell me the white Catherine Kuhlman was here. Now the black Catherine Kuhlman has come. And I met my sister, and uh, she was being introduced to preach. She didn't know whom I was. I sat down. She ministered. I went to the one who was organizing. I said, you know what, please, I can't preach after that woman of God. She has done everything. I'm not worthy to stand before her presence. She was my senior by far. She finalized it. And then afterwards, they said, no, we are going to invite you. So, of course, I heard the message. I stood, and my message was for forgiveness. I started preaching, and all of a sudden, I told people, stand up and raise up your hand, and you start thanking God. When they were thanking God, there was somebody at the balcony, and she was, he was so frustrated with his people. They went there because she was in a wheelchair, and so many people got here during Catherine Coleman, and uh, he was not getting healed. But when we were worshiping God, how he flew, and then he came where I was, I don't know. And the people came carrying the wheelchair. They said, it's my brother. He has been here the whole week. But today, God has decided to come, and he has healed him. He was everywhere. I said, Lord, you mean there were other people here? When Catherine Kuhlman was praying, there were other people left. Before I knew, I was not praying for the sick, though. Other people on that corner, they were crippled. They started coming, carrying their wheelchairs like that. 
And then I say, Lord, you are such a wonderful God. For 30 minutes, I could not preach. Testimonies, testimonies everywhere, everywhere. Then I continue with my message. And people forgave each other, almost the whole congregation. And some of them, they told me, we never believed that a black person would come to us, minister, and feel convinced. We are convinced. We have come to understand that there is God in heaven. Amen. Praise the name Amen. of the Lord. This is how far the time has gotten us. We cannot continue, but guess what? We're going to be right here next week, same time, and we're going to be still talking to Bishop Margaret Wangari, an amazing general of God. So tune in next week, same time, same channel. God bless you and have yourself the most amazing week.